In our last video, we outlined the derivation of the electron wave function orthogonal to the z-axis aligned with the two deuterons. We described a set of spatial harmonic oscillator states along with the time-dependent wave functions. We showed how to calculate this spatial wave function from the force constant of the parabolic potential felt by the electron. We left off with a time-dependent wave function for the one electron state that was not time-independent. We show here a sketch of the electron orbit at position z prime. We choose z prime so that the time-dependent phase factor is some integer n times 2 pi. We then choose the next point, z double prime, along the z-axis, which will give a phase factor of n plus 1 times 2 pi. Then an arbitrary point z between these two points will give n times 2 pi plus del, where del is between 0 and 2 pi. We re rearrange the equation to keep the right-hand side an integer value of 2 pi, and then define del as an addition to the phase factor contributed by some small energy E sub j. So what is E sub j? Recall that the electron in this state is diffracted from the conduction band. We draw in an arbitrary plane wave K sub j from the conduction band with energy E sub j. Physically, this energy can either increase the xy orbital velocity or decrease it as shown. So we can add or subtract the energy brought into this deuteron state as we show in the equations below. We see from these two equations that 2 times the phase factor of the energy E sub j at the maximum value of E sub j will equal 2 pi. The maximum value of E sub j is, of course, the Fermi energy. So the phase factor of the Fermi energy must be at least pi. You may be wondering what is special about integer multiples of 2 pi. Recall Euler's identity shown here. If you put an integer multiple of 2 pi as the phase factor, the result will always be 1. In other words, time independent. We have now shown that with a high enough Fermi energy, we can create a stationary state along the z-axis using amplitudes for all the energy states in the conduction band. But since the deuteron separation will vary along each deuteron orbital path, the time-dependent phase factor for an individual point along z will re require the full range of conduction band energies to produce a stationary state at even one point. We can schematically picture this by drawing the Fermi sphere of conduction band states with the deuteron aligned in the z direction as shown, and then coloring in the plane of states which can be diffracted with this deuteron orientation. If we move the deuterons, this disk of states will, of course, also move. Since the deuterons has a, have a spherically symmetric wave function, all of the electrons in the conduction band are necessary to produce this deuteron state. Now recall from a previous video the graph of deuteron orbital time, Tb minus Ta, versus the principal quantum number. If we calculate the Fermi energy required in each state, we get the next graph shown for states n equals 30 through 35, with Fermi energies below 20 electron volts. Palladium hydride has a Fermi energy of about 12 electron volts. We calculate a minimum Fermi energy of about 8.9 electron volts for the n equals 35 state. At first glance, the Fermi energy should not be a limiting factor to formation of the deuteron state. But a look at a three-dimensional Fermi surface in momentum space for a typical face-centered cubic lattice shows that the peak Fermi energy is a fair amount larger than the minimum energy on the surface. We will discuss this more later when delving into the chemistry around the deuteron intermediate. Next time, we'll start to analyze the nuclear energy loss via coupling to the electron state in the deuteron intermediate.